When you hear the word breakout, that's not always a good thing for a lot of people. It kind of makes them think about the stock market, meeting rooms, zits, jail, herpes even. But don't worry, fantasy football to the rescue. Because in this game, breakouts are a good thing. And time and time again, we see a lot of these breakouts happening in the second year of a player's career. That's why in today's episode, we're looking for a few of those players who are primed to have a second year breakout. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Hopefully everyone's doing well out there today. Where yes, we're talking about a few second year players that are just... They're on the verge of busting the F out in 2024. There was so much talent in that rookie class of 2023, I could probably include like 27 guys on this list. Now, obviously, you may be looking forward to a few different players than what I mentioned today. That does not mean that I don't like those players as well. So be sure to leave a comment down below of what second year player you're looking forward to the most. I would love to be able to have that conversation with you down below in the comment section. Now, real quick, before we get into the players in today's show, a quick word from today's sponsor. That's right, Jake. Today we're talking about the perfect jean. We're taking a walk. I'm taking you with me. And you know what I'm wearing? The perfect jean. They're so breathable. It's like 80 degrees here. and I'm outside in black jeans walking. Like, I mean, come on. What other jeans can you do that in? And you know what? Speaking of things that you uh, can't do in other jeans, can your jeans do this? Or how about this? Look, I get it. You're saying, Taylor, I would never do any of that in jeans. And you know what? That's fine. I agree. I agree with you. But the fact is you could. Out here doing all this stuff and not once have the boys been crushed or worse. We were asked to leave the park because all the soccer moms kept staring. There's the jeans. There's no way your jeans can do all of that. It's time to say your khakis and get the perfect jean 15% off right now using our exclusive code headliners15 at theperfectgene.nyc. All the links are down below in the description. You can find them down there. Once again, that's code headliners15 at theperfectgene.nyc. Let's get back to the video. Up first, Anthony Richardson, quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts. So one of two things is going to happen in the career of Anthony Richardson. He's going to have a Cam Newton-esque rise to early career domination, or he's going to destroy his body with all the hits he takes and be in a blue medical tent more than he is on the field. Because there is zero doubt about it. If he's healthy and he plays, he's a top 10 fantasy quarterback all day long. He only played in two full games and two partial games in 2023. In the two full games he played, which were weeks one and weeks four, he was the quarterback four overall in fantasy and the quarterback two overall in fantasy on the week. Heck, in week two, the guy only played in 18 snaps and had 17.7 fantasy points before leaving that game early. Now, on average, quarterbacks play right around 60 offensive snaps per game. But Anthony Richardson only played 173 snaps all season long. So in reality, Anthony Richardson played right around three full games worth of offensive snaps. And he scored 73.7 fantasy points on the year. If we take that 73.7 and divide it by the three full games worth of snaps, that comes out to be 24.6 fantasy points per game. Last year, Josh Allen was the overall quarterback one on the season, and he averaged 24.1 fantasy points per game. We know that Michael Pittman is back this year. Jonathan Taylor should be there for a full year. Josh Downs in his second season as a pro and a top 15 pick in the draft. Plus, you have a quarterback in Anthony Richardson whose goal line rushing upside is up there to rival the likes of Jalen Hurts. If this dude plays anywhere close to a full season, I'm just going to say it right now. He's going to be a lock to be a top five quarterback in fantasy football. Up next is Rasheed Rice, wide receiver of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's now going to get a full season as the number one wide receiver for a Mahomes-led offense, and that is always intriguing. Now, I know... I know about Hollywood Brown. Take it, take a damn deep breath for a second. I'm going to tell you why I still love Rasheed Rice. Rice had a great rookie year. 79 catches, 938 yards, 7 touchdowns, but he didn't start getting more than 6 targets a game until week 12. Over his last 6 games of the regular season, he averaged 9 targets, 
seven catches, and 86 yards per game while having three touchdowns over that span. He was the wide receiver six overall in fantasy football from week 12 on. Now, if you take those per game averages and calculate them over a 17 game full season, it would have been 119 catches for 1,462 yards and in the neighborhood of eight touchdowns. That would have been 253 fantasy points in half PPR scoring. That would have made him the wide receiver three over overall on the season in 2023. Now, Kansas City didn't bring in some big-time free agent wide receiver. T. Higgins, he was franchised in Cincinnati. Pittman, he's back in Indianapolis. Mike Evans re-signed in Tampa Bay. But we also know that Kansas City lost MVS. Marquez Valdez-Scantling is no longer there. How about Travis Kelsey? Well, he's sad that his brother isn't in the league anymore, plus he's getting a little bit older himself. We started to see a slight decline just last year which really just leaves the Chiefs the draft, the NFL draft, in order to bring in maybe another quote-unquote playmaker type of wide receiver, but do they really do that? They're coming off another Super Bowl win, and they've basically swapped MVS for Hollywood Brown, which is definitely an upgrade. But Rice already has that lead receiver role in this Mahomes offense. And where I really love Rasheed Rice's game, it's his yards after the catch. That's where he excels. The third most yards after the catch of all NFL wide receivers in 2023. He averaged 8.3 yards after the catch per reception. What about Hollywood Brown? He hasn't even averaged over four and a half yards after the catch per reception over his last three seasons. How about in the red zone? That's another spot they really utilize Rasheed Rice in Kansas City. He had 22 red zone targets. That was seventh most among all wide receivers. Hollywood? He had nine red zone targets, 49th among all NFL pass catchers. He's not the biggest guy. He's not going to be that red zone threat. And really, I don't know why people continue to overvalue Hollywood Brown. He's going to kill it in Baltimore with the limited weapons, and then he doesn't. He's going to kill it in Arizona with limited weapons and his former college quarterback, Kyler Murray. And then he doesn't. Dude only has one 1,000-yard season over his five-year career. Things could have been a lot worse for Rice in Kansas City had they brought in a bigger name free agent wide receiver. I am not off the Rasheed Rice bandwagon in 2024. But now we're going to get him a little bit cheaper because people are going to look at the sign of Hollywood Brown and think that all of a sudden there's not enough targets to go around. I don't know if you've been paying attention for the last few years or not, but Patrick Mahomes is going to throw the ball a lot. Where Hollywood Brown may be a little bit more of that one-trick pony, Rasheed Rice is going to be the more consistent option in this offense week after week after week, and the writing is all over the wall for him to have a breakout year. How about a tight end, the football kind? And I need to make a bold statement here. I am not some hot take type of guy. I never have been. But as I sit here in March, if I I had to look at the overall tight ends in fantasy football and pick one to finish as the tight end one overall in 2024. Right now, I'm kind of leaning towards Trey McBride of the Arizona Cardinals. Halfway through the season, the dude went full-on beast mode. Ended the year with 106 targets, 81 catches, 825 yards, and three touchdowns. Let's compare that to last year's number one overall tight end, Sam Laporta. He had 120 targets, 86 receptions, 889 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Really, the only difference between the two was the touchdowns. But we got to remember that Trey McBride didn't even have his starting quarterback in Kyler Murray until week 10 of the season. From week 10 on, Trey McBride averaged eight targets, seven receptions, and 67 yards. He also had two of his three touchdowns on the season over that span as well. If you average that over a 17-game season, that's 136 targets, 119 receptions, 1,139 yards, and five touchdowns. That's 203 fantasy points and half PPR scoring and would have given him 19 more fantasy points than Sam Laporta in 2023. Now that 19 points kind of gives us a little bit of wiggle room, right? We know Travis Kelsey is aging. We know TJ Hawkinson is going to be coming off of a torn ACL. The tight end position has a lot of options, but we're looking for guys that can rack up some targets, and that is Trey McBride. Remember, Hollywood Brown is in Kansas City. Rondell Moore is no longer there. He's in Atlanta. Zach Ertz is gone. 
And at the time of this recording, the Cardinals' current starting wide receivers are second-year wide receiver Michael Wilson, who I do like. How about Big Dorch Energy, Greg Dorch, and Chris Moore? Solid depth guys, but not really any alpha wide receivers in that group. Now, there is a good possibility that Arizona goes after a wide receiver early in the draft, whether it be Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors. But Arizona isn't going to be some defensive juggernaut. They're going to be losing, and they're going to have to throw the ball a lot once again. And by the look of the depth chart, McBride should have no issues getting targets, even if Arizona does spend that early pick on a high-end wide receiver. There should be more than enough to go around to make Trey McBride a potential breakout here in 2024. But like we said at the beginning of the show, there were so many talented rookies in 2023. A lot of guys are going to have the opportunity to break out here in 2024. Just because you didn't see them in today's show does not mean that I do not like them. These were just a couple guys that I'm really looking forward to watch playing in 2024. But I also only included three because I actually like to communicate with my audience. So if there are some players out there heading into their second year that you're looking forward to, that you think they have that opportunity to break out, leave those comments down below in the comment section. I'm going to do my best to respond to every single comment left on this video. It's always fun to have those conversations with the community, with Headliner Nation. It's what really makes us better overall fantasy football players because yes, I will admit, Sometimes there are things that you see that I don't and vice versa. And that's why we really built what we've built here. But I'm looking forward to those off-season conversations. I'm going to go ahead and head out of here for the day. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day. But most importantly, do your part to make the world a better place. I'm a